Look good for our age. All right, whenever you want to start, you can. All right. Edit Sandy Alomar interview coming down in three, two, one. Good to catch up once again with former Indians All-Star catcher, 1997 All-Star Game MVP, Rookie of the Year, all the accolades, and congratulations to Sandy Alomar, who was uh, uh, given a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Sports Awards Banquet recently. Uh, how'd that feel, man? Uh, it, was a, it was an honor to, to be uh, mentioned with uh, such great legends in Cleveland. I, uh, I greatly appreciate that honor and uh, very humble about it. Sandy, how many years now with the Indians organization? Well, uh, this is my ninth year coaching and uh, 11 as a player, so do the math 20. 20 <laughs> years. It, when you were traded from San Diego to Cleveland, could you have ever imagined being with an organization as a player, a coach, for 20 years? Uh, not, not really. I, uh, but I, I was, th that trade was the best thing that ever happened to me and uh, opened the door for an opportunity to play Major League Baseball. And then uh, when the, the Cleveland Indians organization decided to keep the core player for a long period of time. I was quickly glad to jump in that, into that and uh, be able to be a, uh, have a stable uh, career here in Cleveland. What is it about that core group where they have been, you included, successful after the game? You look at Omar, he's hopefully going to manage one day. You going to manage one day. Jimmy just went into the Hall of Fame. Kenny Lofton, we had him on our show last week. He's producing movies and directing movies. What, what is it about that core group? I think the, the most important thing about that core group was that I always say they care. They care about making a difference in the city of Cleveland. They care that uh, there was a perfect opportunity to come to a city that needed in such a drought of winning to come in and do the best they could so they can establish a winning tradition. And uh, they all did. They all came in and were on board with signing multi-year deals. And uh, we were able to keep this guy for a while and able to create uh, a steady organization with uh, with winning records. So most importantly, they really care. Let's get to what you're doing now. Catching instructor, first base coach uh, again this season for, for Terry and this team. And the catching position, we, we've seen a, a major change there with the trade of Jan Gomes. Uh, and so that moves Roberto up a notch, and then Plowicki comes in from, from the Mets. Uh, what about Roberto now as the, the featured signal caller back there behind the dish? I mean, I've always been proud to have those two guys uh, going back in the past with uh, Gomer and, uh, and Roberto Perez. Those guys uh, make my job a lot easier when it comes to fundamentals and working and, and running. They run the catching because they, they, uh, they, li they lead by a sample. Uh, but that now that Gomer is gone, Roberto has taken to that, you know, to, to, uh, to, took that to responsibility. Right. So uh, he's, uh, he's done a tremendous job in spring training so far. He's in phenomenal catching shape. Uh, I, really, I really think that Roberto has been blessed with uh, uh, excellent catching skills. He has uh, such an awareness of uh, how to catch, how to call a game. And uh, he has a, an unbelievable catching stance that I feel like he can. He's very efficient at blocking, throwing, and and receiving all three. And uh, his his framing numbers are among the best in the league. So he's he's an elite catcher defensively. Uh, the one thing he has to you know get better is his offense. When you say framing, what's the key to framing? Because we we've seen it for years, and and it's part of the game. And if you have a good one, uh, you can uh, buy strikes, shorten the inning. A number of pitches for your pitcher and, and keep the momentum going. What's the key with that? Well, he, well, first of all, you have to have good hands to, to frame good. You have to work under the baseball, but you have to take into consideration the pitching the umpire and also you, you yourself, the catcher. Uh, the, one of the things that we try to focus here is uh, try to protect the, the white part of the plate. Not, it's not more. It's not much about gaining strikes. It's more about. Uh, not losing strikes on the zone. Okay. And then and and that's that's the big key. If you start worrying too much about the buffer zone or an uh, inch or two inches away, then if the pitcher doesn't throw hit the, or hit the location, then you're gonna miss a strike. Those are the strikes that you need. Working ahead in the count is good because the the importance of that is that the earlier you are hitting the count, the slugging percentage in opposition goes down. That's what people don't understand. Right. It's like okay. it, it's not just uh, a strike. It is like. A, the more I hit in the count you can pitch, the power numbers on our position go down. For Ploiecki, well, what, uh, what do you see out of him in the short time that you've worked with him uh, that will enable him to be a, a, a good backup or, if necessary, a starting catcher at one point? Well, he's, he's working right now. We're working hard on his catching stance, on his secondary stance. He's a, he's a, he's a bigger guy, 
and uh, at a time when you're bigger, umpires can see very very good over you. So like we're trying to we are working on on the on the secondary stance that uh, he's he's he can work and comfortable and not efficient for him. He can stay under the baseball. Uh, he has tendency to go over the baseball, and that that causes uh, for you to drop pitches in the zone. Uh, but he's he's doing a good job. He's he's adapting to our format, which is like efficiency, efficiency on blocking, efficiency on throwing, and efficiency on receiving. All those three, you have to have a catching stance if you're efficient at it. Not just one, not just receiving, or not just blocking. You have to do all three of those. Not the best at it, but efficient for you and for the team. Sandy Alomar is our guest here on the Kenny and JT Show from Spring Training 2019. Santos, uh, you handle the catchers, but you also have the, the first base coaching duties. What does a first base coach do? What, what, how do you, for a game, tell me what goes through preparing for the game and then when you're out there during the innings on offense. So what, what, what exactly are you doing? So, like in the past, uh, first base coach was normally known as a guy to pick up the helmets and <laughs> have the batting glove. But uh, I think that first base coach uh, can make a big impact if you really care about, you know, getting the best out of your players. You have to understand the opposition defense. You have to understand the pitchers, what kind of move they have. Uh, a lot of video. I watch a lot of videos on pitchers, catchers, infielders. Uh, somebody might tip something to you that you can take uh, advantage of. Uh, just give information to the players that when they take the field, they are 100% ready to go uh, without a doubt. Uh, I try to give uh, information that so when they come in, we're ready from pitch one. Uh, there's there's times that uh, you know uh, Tito gives everybody the, the green light. You know he's that's the perfect way to do it. But with, with that green light comes responsibility, and you have to respect that. Uh, so my responsibility is to educate the player, the runner, uh, the situation, and what who's, who's the guy you're facing right now at this point, and what what advantages you can take off you know of that guy. We see you holding a stopwatch uh, at times at, at first base. What is that? For the pitcher to home plate, or is that yeah. the catcher? Every, everybody, everybody has to stop. Well, every first base coach has to, uh, time is everything. Inches are everything here in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you normally want to pair uh, what you see in the video with what you see live. You know, I might see something in the video, but then if I don't see it live, then I have to see it live. That, that's one of the things I say. I saw this, but we got to see it live. Uh, you know, also you 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 uh, you time the the, the pickup move is. You know, if it's 0 0.50 seconds to first base, but it's uh, one second to first base, so you can create distance between first and second. Mm -hmm. So the lead, you steal the base on the lead. If the guy has a good move, he can control the lead a little better, but if the guy doesn't have a great move, that's very important. You have to understand who has a long arm, short arm, who has a spin move, who, who really just have a two-step move, which is the slowest move, and then you can expand according to that, and then from there you go. Sandy. You're an instructor for the catchers, first base coach. You managed six games back uh, in 2012, three and three, 500 manager. Is that the end goal for you, uh, one well, day being a, the manager of a major league baseball team? Well, a anybody that coaches always has a goal of managing. I mean, I don't have, I don't solicit, I don't network, and I don't have an agenda per se. I just focus on what I'm doing. If the opportunity arrives, yeah, obviously, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to that. I, right. I, but everybody that coaches should have that in mind. You know, hey, I'm coaching, but I also have, would like an opportunity to manage. Everybody does that. I mean, of course, but right now my focus is to be in the playoff and win the World Series. How much fun, though, would it be if you were in one dugout as a manager and Omar was in the other dugout as a manager? That <laughs> would be great. I, you know, <laughs> I, I talked to Omar once in a while, like, in our season about, you know, wishing him luck. I think he interviewed with the Angels. Yeah. So the process for him really started. I'm glad, I'm glad he's getting an opportunity to get an interview. He deserved it, and he also deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. All right, look, I agree with the, uh, the thought there as far as if you look at Ozzy Smith, if you look at Bill Mazeroski, if you're going by defensive, you know, gold gloves and how they affected the game, there's no doubt that, that Omar belongs in there based on some of those other guys that are in the Hall of Fame. It's just that, you know, you look at the numbers, they're there over the years as well. So why do you think he's not uh, in yet? I, I, think, I think the reason that I think he's not right now is because a group of guys that went in at the same time he went. So some of those guys are clear in already. So okay. his opportunity is going to come out. It's going to come out now with a new, different group of guys that are coming. That Omar is going to have his number going up. Did it or does it hurt him that a lot of times we see guys had major impact moments in the postseason? 
that they're remembered for. Ozzy hit a home run to win a playoff, mm-hmm. a game or series or something like that, you know, uh, and, and having that impact in the postseason as that, you know, you always hear the Heisman moment, well, the, the, the Hall of Fame moment. Do, do you think that hurt him or hurts him that he hasn't had or didn't have that playoff moment like you did with the home run off of Rivera or something like that? No, nah, because it, this is a collage of uh, a moment. It's not okay. just one moment. Omar, you know, it's, it's not about the decoration of the cake. He has the whole cake himself, okay. you know, like uh, – I, uh, I see him as a, a super steady player through all his career, and uh, he, he had great moments in the playoffs. He just does, he, he wasn't uh, home runs and stuff like that, but he also set up tables and stuff like that and made great plays. So if you remember that play he made against Charlie Johnson when the ball in the hole, that was a fantastic play in the playoff. That's, that's, that replay is everywhere. So he had a steady career, and uh, he was close to 3,000 hits. And, uh, and a million gold gloves so to go with that. So, you know, if, if you say that, uh, talking about a player that was almost complete, complete player, Omar was one of those guys that uh, brought to the table many, many skills that no many other players had. All right, we go from the best shortstop you played with to the best shortstop in the game today who's with the Cleveland Indians and Francisco Lindor. What, what do you see out of him that maybe uh, could make him the, the face of not just this team, but of Major League Baseball? Um, <laughs> this guy, the guy is always happy. That's one of the things I really like about Lindor. He's always smiling and stuff like that, so he's relaxed out there. But man, this guy has all the tools in the world, and uh, he, he, he uses them all. And, and uh, at early age, he already established himself of, if not the best, one of the best. I, I, I see him even getting better. Nothing, you don't see him. He works hard, and he wants to get better every year. So he really is a face for a franchise. This team this year, a lot of moves in the offseason. Different approach maybe to score runs, but the pitching staff's going to be there. Give, give me your thoughts on what you've seen. Where are we now? We are in day 15. Of, it's early still, but yeah. uh, what do you think of this year's team? I. I, uh, it seems more athletic right now because we have you know a few younger guys and uh, guys that can probably run better. I don't know how the platoon situation is going to go. That's that's for the organization to decide. But uh, I uh, remember me and Carlos Barrier came in a situation like this. We came in to make, to get the team younger and uh, we developed a dynasty after that. Even though we didn't win the World Series, but it was fun to go to the ballpark. I think these guys uh, are trying to keep. The, the window of winning opportunity a lot bigger than it was in the past. So like, you just want to get caught up and, and, and become the oldest team real fast, and then all of a sudden you have to rebuild completely. We, we, they, don't, they don't think like that here. So I see a, a more athletic team, more mobile team, so hopefully we can, we can score a run. But I know the pitching staff, to me, one to five is the best in baseball. It's not, not even close. I believe that Beaver and uh, Clevinger in the lower half is going to—they're going to they, gonna have a fantastic year too. What makes—and let's quickly go through them as a former catcher. You watch him. What makes Corey Kluber a two-time Cy Young Award winner? Well, he throws a, he's a strike throwing machine, <laughs> and he has a lot of movement on the ball. Late bites in the ball. Uh, he creates angles, uh, hits spots on the outside, uh, sinker back door, slider is one of the best in, the, in baseball. And he creates like, uh, he throws 92, 93, 90, around that area. He, he lives around 92, but, but his fastball looks like it's 96 because his breaking ball is so good. What about Trevor Bauer? A completely different approach to the game, but it's working for him. He was in contention before he got hurt last year for the Cy Young. Well, Trevor Bauer, you know, really uh, has come a long way. He, he had a plan when he first came here, and that plan is all taking in great shape because he's all the spin rate and all these uh, different mechanics that he brought here. At first, everybody was kind of skeptical about it. I him, was, but, yeah. But hey, man, the guy never hurt. He's never hurt. He's not, I've never seen that guy in the DL unless it was a fractured uh, uh, leg. Fibula, yeah. He's, or the uh, drone. Stay away from the yeah, drones. Yeah, yeah, but that was like uh, an incident. <laughs> but uh, his wall condition, I mean, the way he, he throws baseballs and the way he's, he's his program is really working. Right. So, Kudos to him, and uh, he knows how to pitch up in his own. He has a, a fantastic secondary pitches, and he's uh, he's a machine. Yeah, he is. What about Carlos Carrasco? Oh, Carlos is Carlos to really turn that corner two years ago. Uh, 
becoming a pitcher that he was kind of injured a little bit, but but now he's coming. He's he's becoming a big game pitcher. Like you know, he he pitched well in the playoff. Yeah. So Carlos is like I, I put him in a Corey Kluber category. So I'm uh, those three guys are are, are you, you know uh, Kluber, Carrasco, and Bauer. You gotta put him aside and say these guys are in the top of the mountain right now. You got three aces on one set. Yes, and I believe the other two guys, Clevenger and Weaver, are like. They're good, man. Yeah, <laughs> they're good. Sandy Alomar, I guess, last thing, Sandy, before we let you go, we appreciate the time. The All-Star Games coming to Cleveland, Progressive Field, uh, for the sixth time overall, as Bobby DiBiasio pointed out to us. First time since you were the most valuable player in 1997. Take me back, uh, if you can, because I know when that week comes around, you're going to be uh, seen all over the place, uh, you know, with the home run, I believe it was off Sean Estes, right? That's correct. Uh, take me back to that, uh, that, that moment for you and what it meant. Well, first of all, uh, the fact that I was named to the All-Star game in my own ballpark was like, uh, it was humbling, man. It was like a great experience. I never thought that I have an opportunity to play an All-Star game in my own ballpark. Then having an uh, opportunity to go, uh, with, with the game on the line and hit a home run. I, I was kind of anxious in that bat. The first two uh, the first two pitches were balls in the dirt and I was swinging over it like, <laughs> I didn't even know what I was thinking. I just may step out, take a deep breath, you just do what you do. You just kind of hit the ball up the middle, whatever. And it happened to throw a change up and I hit it out. And uh, that was like, I was floating on the bases, man. And then, you know, the cherry on top is like, having my son coming in the field and, and taking a picture with me with a, with a with the trophy, that was awesome, man. He's uh, he still have the trophy, by the way. <laughs> what was it about you in big moments? All star game at Jacobs Field, then home run. Mariano Rivera, who just went into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. home run beating the Yankees. Uh, and I heard that Rajay Davis came to you for advice before his big at bat in, in the World Series in 2016 against the Cubs, facing a hard thrower. Uh, you know, uh, and you helped him out. Uh, what was it with you in big <laughs> moments? I just felt like. Uh, Roger was swinging the bat too hard and trying to do too much. And, and I, the, the, the one thing I told Roger in that I bat, well, actually prior to that, I said, hey, man, when you face a closer, just try to do the necessary. You don't have to do nothing extraordinary because sometimes you, throw, you try to do little things and big things will show up. Uh, but don't try, he's going to supply the power for you. Okay. So don't try to do too much. And he went out there, he just literally threw the hands to the ball and hit it out. <laughs> we went crazy. I started jumping. I like, go, oh my gosh. It's not because of me, but I guess right. because I was so happy that he he felt it. He said, oh man, I felt it. But he was such a, that was a fantastic home run, by the way. I mean, I couldn't believe that we came back in that game and then the rain came, but it was, to me, it was the most memorable home run that I've seen at Progressive Field. That was unbelievable. Yeah, but yours was pretty big with, with yeah, Rivera. Yeah, he, he Did you take the same approach? Yes, yes. I was thinking small, uh, nothing. I was thinking up in the zone, away. I was looking area, and uh, I just happened to throw it there and just threw my hands out there. But uh, it doesn't come out like that. If I would have think more body or, or harder or more power, I would have probably just spun it out of the away from the ball. But I was thinking just hands, and uh, just threw my hands. He supplied the power. So even Rivera says, oh, yes, I hate that home run for him. I supply, I supply the power. I say, all right, buddy. So. Santos, we appreciate the time. Uh, continued success with the Indians in this role. And uh, one day I hope to see you, you managing, if not here in Cleveland, somewhere in the big leagues. And, uh, uh, you know, hope the family is doing well. And we always appreciate you making time for us. Thank you very much, Andy. Appreciate it, Santos. All right. All right. Thanks. All right, fellas. See you.